Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to deal with a controversial statement that I've made, which actually negates most of mainstream calculus, and that's why it's controversial. It's been around for a long time, and I've been discussing this on the forum called Sci.Math. So I challenged um, the fools who hang out on Sci.Math to find a function that actually is a counterexample, which proves my statement wrong. Let's quickly take a look at what my statement says. It says, if a function has a limit at a particular point c, then the function is defined at x is equal to c. It is not possible for a limit to exist at c and f of c to be undefined. There are no holes in, function, in functions unless mainstream orangutans put them there. And I've shown you how in other episodes, uh, ignorant academics try to punch holes into functions. And there's a good reason they do this, simply because the limit definition requires that a hole exist at a particular uh, point. Well, to put it another way, it doesn't matter if it's defined there or not, according to the limit definition. Okay, so it may be defined there or it may not be defined there. But they do need that there's a possibility of it not being defined there. Otherwise, the actual definition of the limit uh, would not be valid. For example, they say that the distance between x and the point must be less than delta but greater than zero. So that greater than zero part means that it's not necessarily defined at the point c. So now the orangutans came up with this function here, e to the minus 1 over x squared, and they claim that it has a limit at x is equal to zero, which is zero. And naturally, if you go to Wolfram Alpha Computational Engine, they'll say the same thing. And I'm going to show you now that that's not true. So let's take a look at some examples. When I taught IB uh, Mathematics and uh, AP Calculus in China, uh, one of the textbooks I've used was, was Thompson's Calculus, and exercise 8.1 has a lot of exercises on limits. And so here's an example where we determine this limit in a way that's not uh, usually done with simple limits. So for example, we work out what the bottom part is going to be, and this is the bottom part, the denominator. And the process that we use here is first we change the form into an exponent and then we transfer the limit from in front of the expression to the exponent so we all we are doing here is we're transferring it from in front of the e or the expression and we're transferring it into the exponent and then we calculate the limit of that exponent and evaluate the value of the whole expression and we can do that simply because it will always produce the correct result. But there are exceptions, as you'll see in a moment. Now, um, then we take the limit of the expression as a whole, and we split it up into this. And now we already know that the denominator is 1. And we finally realize that the limit of the numerator is infinity. And consequently, this here has no limit, because infinity is not a limit. So as you can see, we always transfer the limit from before the exponent, before the exponent, into the exponent, and we evaluate it that way, okay? And there are several other examples where this happens too. So if we move down, we can see in this particular example here, we transfer the limit to the exponent, and then we do some substitutions, and eventually we figure out that the value of this expression here at the limit is e to the 7. And there are many recipes for how we can evaluate these limits in the Thompson's calculus exercises, as I've demonstrated here in this sample file. Now, let's go back to this uh, GeoGebra applet. And so what we have here really is this particular function. And they're saying, the mainstream academics are saying that it's continuous everywhere here. And I actually uh, reject that. I'm saying it's not continuous at the point is x is equal to 0. And I'm saying uh, if it is continuous, then it doesn't have a limit. 
In this case, how can that be? Because uh, I'm saying that if it has a limit, then it has to be defined, which means it's continuous at zero, yes? Okay, so uh, what the mainstreamers are saying is that there is a limit at x is equal to zero, but it's not defined there. Okay, so now let's take a look at this and see why uh, there is no limit at x is equal to zero. If we look at the, if we look at the, the object which is simply a three-dimensional graph of this object here and raise it up like that, we'll see that, we'll see that all along here, there has to be, it's undefined all along the x-axis, which actually comes out towards us, right? The x-axis comes out towards us. But if this, if this were actually true, then what it's saying is that, it's saying that when we transfer the limit here, the value of this expression becomes infinity, right? And then all we're doing is we're plugging infinity into the exponent. So we're saying e to the infinity, e to the infinite to the minus infinity, e to the minus infinity is equal to zero. But infinity is not a number. Okay, so there's no way we can transfer the limit and then have no limit existing and then evaluate the expression with no limit. That just doesn't work. Okay, so we can't say e to the power of minus infinity is equal to zero. That's the kind of garbage that Euler wrote in his Elements of Algebra. And it's kind of percolated down into all of mainstream mathematics. Now, uh, it's obvious, it's pretty obvious now, it should be pretty obvious, that, that there is no limit here. Okay, and so this whole question of whether it's defined at x is equal to zero or not is it cannot be determined because we know that the limit does not exist as I've just shown you right now we cannot take a value such as the one that I showed you transfer to the exponent like I did in this example here okay let's just go back to that example um, I think it was 29. Yeah, like I did in this example here, we can transfer it to the limit. In this case here, the limit exists. The limit is zero. We can't have a, an infinity limit here and then say e to the infinity to the minus infinity is equal to zero. So what they're saying is that this here evaluates to minus infinity, which means there's no limit. And then e to the minus infinity is zero. And that's obviously rubbish. Okay, so... That is the main message of this video, and I hope that you will have learned something from this. Hopefully join me again next time, and I challenge you to try and find any function you can that has a limit and is not defined at that particular point where the limit exists. So, I'm John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.